I'll give you a perfect example. One is called a time slip. Now, I look at this very scientifically. Uh, Albert Einstein, at the last years of his life, was um, looking at time travel. And he was looking about how we measure time. He started to come up with this theory that the past, the present, and the future were all going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is what he is what this is what he thought. Yeah. Okay. Now, if that's if say that's true, it may not be true, but say we don't know. But say that's okay, that it's happening. Say for example, you're at a specific place and you get a glimpse of the past that's going on. Mm -hmm. At Gettysburg, that ha this happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Gettysburg National Park. Yeah. I've talked to park rangers there that said that they have witnessed at seven o'clock in the morning what looked like maybe a couple dozen guys parading around like a Wednesday morning when there's no reenactments and then they just disappear. They're not seeing ghosts. Right. I think that they're getting a, a glimpse into a different dimension and that we can't understand with space and time and travel. We really can't understand it, right. but they're getting a glimpse of something that's going on in the past that's alive. That's not a ghost. So that to me is not evil. All right, let me tell you what, I want, we, we need to get around ghost cameraman. Because to, to get to all of John Salas, you have to get both of your eyes because you're a, you're like a really expressive dude, okay? Okay. So I want to make sure they move this camera over there and we can get both eyes. Because I mean, when I'm sitting here watching, I'm kind of fascinated by watching at the way you express yourself. So I, I just want to make sure we capture that to the home viewers. Because I think this is going to be a powerful show. You think I, it's going to be powerful? I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. I want it to be fun. I want it to be both educational and fun. Yeah. I want the I want the audience to uh, to like what they're in, what they're watching. Watch watch what they're viewing, and then you know get a little bit educated about you know. I think to open some people you know they haven't been like exposed to a lot of different things. Right. And I think you have to keep your mind open that there's so many different possibilities in this world. All right, I gotta get right to it because one of the things that like, when when you come into a building like this, this is a this is a building built in 2000. I mean, could there be ghosts re creeping around in here? Well, I think sometimes land, the land that any, that's around, that okay. if you people put a dwelling on it, if there's something in the land yeah. that sometimes will inhabit, um, there could be something there right. in the land. Right. And then what happens is you put a dwelling on that and somebody's living there and then all of a sudden something starts happening. It has nothing to do with the dwelling. It has to do with the I thought somebody died here. You think if somebody, I don't think we've had anybody die here yet, but... Like, if somebody died in the building, do you think that, I mean, does it, I'm just worried. Well, okay, well, I think that this, this is what, this is now these theories that these, these, um, I guess, they, they're not experts, but these people have these theories about why, yeah. why, why sometimes uh, there are ghosts. Yeah. Why, why? Yeah. Uh, so, sometimes, so wait a minute, the reason that ghosts hang out? Yeah, I mean, there's different, okay, let me give different okay. possibilities. Okay, the majority of Americans, Majority of Americans, if you ask them, you know, what's your idea of a ghost, they'll probably say to you, well, that's Mr. Jones' house over there, he's 90 years old, and, you know, he lived there all his life, and he died, and they said he's still hanging around there, so I think he's a ghost. Well, that's the remnant of a deceased soul. That's one aspect. Then you have time, what I'm talking about, the time slips. That's not a ghost that you're seeing, mm -hmm. okay? Then you have what I think is, like, interdimensional beings that sometimes enter into our dimensional space, that are kind of, and it could be just like a person like you are, look like a person you are. I. It's, I think there's different dimensions that we are unaware of, yeah. and, and I think sometimes when you get this crossover of some being into our dimension, that's not a ghost, mm -hmm. and then they leave our dimension. Yeah. You know, and then now that's, a, that's another possibility. Then there's something called imprinted energy. Now, this is what I've come to conclude about imprinted energy. It could be in a specific locale, where say a significant event happens, yeah. and that event is probably a negative or kind of a, an event that maybe is like brings a lot of pain, emotional pain. Yeah. Sometimes that event is so emotional, so strong that it stays trapped in the dimensional space. Hmm. Like, like a situation. Yeah, yeah, it could yeah. be. Okay, I'll give an example. I was at this uh, Bennett breakfast in Kentucky, well, and yeah. and uh, it was used during the Battle of Perryville as a little hospital for the, in, during the Civil War. But later on, uh, there was a rich family living there, and it was a beautiful place. And up on the second floor, they had a, you know, a, a kind of a rail that wasn't too high. And like a two-year-old son went up there, and he looked, was looking over, and then he fell, mm -hmm. and he crashed. It was a loud bang, and the mother heard. She ran out. She screamed. The kid was dead. Right. They said that now at the bed and breakfast, every year, about the same time when that happens. Guests will report hearing a big loud thump and then a yell. 
Okay? To me, that's not a haunting and that's not a ghost. What that is, that's this residual energy yeah. that has been imprinted in that, in that dimensional space. And for some reason, there's a cycle. And for some reason, it hits a cycle and it goes off. Yeah. And if you happen to be there, you witness that. Yeah. Now, is that a ghost? That's not a ghost. That's residual energy. That's imprinted energy. Yeah. So now you have other beings that can come into our dimensional space. That's not a ghost. Yeah. Then you could have this time slip where you're looking into the past. Or sometimes this. You think that like you're looking at something that may be in the past. Yeah. How about if something in the future is looking at you? Right. Oh, oh man. Man, you make this interesting. I, I can't wait to show so you. So that's all these possibilities that yeah. it could be with a ghost. So okay. when I look at it, I'm like, well, yeah. I, mean, so I, I do believe in demons, though. I believe in demons. I do believe in like, people. Let's say we had a battlefield. Right. I mean, don't you think that's what a, a lot of happened and that, that residual ghost could hang out? Exactly. And that's why, like, major battlefields, especially Gettysburg, is the yeah. most battle, uh, haunted battlefield. You know, 50,000 people lost their lives there. Yeah. And sometimes they think. Now these are with these theories that if somebody dies so suddenly and violently right. that they don't know that they're dead. Right. And what they're doing is they're wandering that area for like, you know, eternity now. For people who, like you said, you know, may look at the Bible and say, well, what does the Bible say about this? The Bible also talks about time and ecclesiastes and about how we can't grasp time. We don't have no perception of time as what time really is. We think time is linear. Mm. It's a starting point and it moves forward. Yeah. I don't think it's linear. I think it's more like a pretzel. <laughs> and that you're just caught up in one of those little twists somewhere. All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going, we're going to be out about the phone lines uh, in one of these segments to let uh, you ask those questions because I know everybody's got one. Um, and and we, we start rocking religion with this and so forth. I mean, it's just so many, many angles and so forth. You said you're going to have psychiatrist come on, animal psychiatrist. Is that no, right? No, uh, she, she considers herself a psychic. Psychic. A psychic, okay, but okay. she also is okay. a animal a, psychic, pet psychic, a pet psychic. Yeah, she'll be on on. Um, I mean, how do you not laugh sometimes? Well, I, you know, <laughs> it, it's like, what are you gonna do? It's, it, I, it's do you really somebody's people? belief system. I don't think anybody should laugh at somebody's belief system. Right. I mean, if that's what they believe, that's what they believe. Now. It may not be in my belief system. Right. Um, I'm not going to like probably. I'm, I might on inside think to myself something, but I mean that's what they. Believe. One of the things I see with psychic people is they look at your body language. Okay. I think there's enough psychics that are fakes out there that they they learn, and you know like Houdini, you he was great at debunking them. Right. There were so many charlatans and, and people that were like doing it. Yeah. Houdini was great. He knew all their tricks. Right. All right, folks, we'll take a break. We'll come back. John Silas with us the whole hour. Stay with us. <laughs> 